students, it's Mr. Matthews. And if you're seeing this, uh, you're maybe seeing double of me, and that's okay. Um, thanks to our library department and the IT department, I have an iPad now, and I can demonstrate things a little bit clearer for you. So you can choose to look at me at this screen, or you can choose to look at me at this screen, and that is totally cool because both of these artist and art teacher are fantastic. And you should listen to this one or this one, whichever one you choose. All right, so we can do this. High five. Dang it, missed. All right, um, today we are working on watercolors. That is right. Uh, today, 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 we are working on watercolors. All right, so uh, what we are going to need is a watercolor set. Uh, I just have a cheaper brand one right here, and that is totally okay. And we're going to need our sketchbook, and we are on page 18. That's right, 18, depending on which screen you're looking at. They're the same thing. And there's this lovely template here that you can find in our Google Classroom. And uh, you can copy it down and then follow along with the steps of this video. So if you need to still copy this down on page 18, please pause this video now and look at that image in the Google Classroom assignment and copy this down so that you can have it and then unpause it and rejoin us. All right, uh, so we have our watercolors, we have our sketchbook. We also need some tissue paper. So it could be from a Kleenex box. It could be a paper towel roll. It could be toilet paper roll. It doesn't matter as long as you have something to absorb water with. Um, also, you will need two, two things of water right here. I have two uh, and they're both clean water and we'll use those as well. So uh, let's get into this. Make sure you have a hard surface to work on like a table that you're sitting upright, uh, that you're not slouching in bed or anywhere that's sort of soft or uncomfortable because you kind of want to be in like a working environment for this. I'm going to turn this camera around and you may see my nose hair and that's okay. Um, well, I switch this button and there we go. Now you should see Mr. Matthews here. Hi. And Mr. Matthews' hands down here performing live with the jazz hands. There we go. All right, um, first thing is first, I'm going to look at our watercolor set. So if you have a watercolor set, this is the perfect time to open it up. And we will open it up, boom. And if it looks like this, no, the horror, who would leave one like this? As artists, when you get ready to make art, you don't wanna open up your art supplies and be like, oh no, I got to clean. No, you want to open it up and be like, all right, I'm ready to go. So whoever did this, whoever was so vile, whoever was so unthoughtful of other people, well, that means we're just going to have to clean it up. And since you are using your own personal watercolor sets, I would hope that you would choose not to keep your set like this. The only way you would really keep this set sort of like this if you were working on a project and you didn't want to unmix a color or have to remix a color and then you could re-wet it and then use it. But I like a clean palette when working. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna go into one of these water cups. And then I'm taking this tissue and wiping away, wiping away all this color and pigment that I do not need in my watercolor sets right now for this use. And now it's all dirty. I can still use it to break up some of this stuff here. And this one down here, you just get all that paint that someone was slightly, well, very inconsiderate uh, with not leaving a clean work surface for us. So when we're in the classroom and when we share supplies, we wanna make sure that we leave things the way we want to open them up and use them. So if you do not like dirty palettes, then you'd want to have a clean palette. And we would just pass that forward to other people. Sort of like if you're in line at Starbucks or McDonald's and you buy the food or the beverage for the person behind you, it's just sort of a nice thing to do. That is something we are going to do by leaving these nice and clean so that when you are ready to work, you just get to go in and work. You don't actually have to worry about cleaning up after someone else. 
and nobody else likes to clean up after you. Ask your parents. All right. Uh, now we got our palette clean. We have our watercolors. We have a brush somewhere sneaking by. We have our two cups of water. That's right, two cups of water. Um, we need to set things up. So if you are, we need to figure out what hand you are. So if you're right-handed, right? Or if you're left-handed, left. Oh, wait, sorry, dyslexic. So left-handed, this is your left hand, and this is your right hand. What you want to do is pick up a pencil be like, this is how I write. That is most likely going to be the hand that you are going to draw and paint with, okay? So we want to set up, if you're right-handed, you have your hand, your pencil in the right hand, what you want is your color palette, and then you want your paint, okay? So it goes color palette, paint, and so it goes outside, further away from your body. If you're left-handed, we got to switch things around here, and you're going to have your left hand over here, and do right one and you're gonna have your palette and you're gonna have your watercolor set, okay? So that's how it's gonna be set up. And then you have your piece of art here. So just like figure out who you are and how you are uh, and what handed you are. And then we're gonna get our notebook, our sketchbook. And with the sketchbook, we're gonna turn the page from 18 all the way to 19. So page 18 is straight up in the air. And what we're gonna do is flip it around. So it's all by itself. All the other paper is over here. Page 18 is by itself right here, okay? So your page 18 should look like this. And then we're gonna set it down on a hard, flat surface like so, just like so. And so then you're going to put your watercolor set, if you're left-handed, right here, like so. And that's how you're gonna work. And you're gonna try to keep things nice and neat. If you're right-handed like myself, you might take up a little bit more room and you're gonna have it over here. So you have your colors, you have your palette, you have what you're working on, okay? And then we're gonna have our water. We have this water and we're gonna put it over here by the color. And this is gonna be our dirty water, our dirty water. That is where we're going to put our paintbrush. That is how we're gonna clean things, okay? And then, and if you don't have like a palette, this is just the lid. It is honestly just the lid. And you can use anything plastic or metal and anything that's not fibrous and it will work. And then we're gonna take our clean water, clean water, and we're gonna put it over here. So we have a clean water furthest away, furthest away from our paint, our dirty water closest to there. Then we're gonna take a tissue paper and we're gonna fold it into like a little square. And we are going to put it right at the bottom of our palette. So now we have this all sort of set up like this. We're in a good place to get started. Now we gotta pick a brush. Some of you might have a brush like this, a really big one. And some of you might have a brush like this where it's a really tiny, tiny uh, brush head right here. Um, we are not gonna use either of those. Um, but if you only have these two, I would use the tiny one and not the big one. The big one's a little bit harder to control because we're working with water. And the whole part of uh, watercolor is managing color. And using a big brush like this one is gonna be really tough. You're gonna to have too much water to manage. And so if you had to choose between these two, I'd pick the small one for this assignment, okay? Uh, and if you can, try to find one that's sort of in between like this one. And if you look at a pink eraser, you might have one at home. It's about this big, it's this big, it's kind of small. It's still so small, but we'll be able to do everything with just this one brush. So if you only have one brush, that is totally okay. Now, if your brush, and you come to me and you're a student and you're like, Mr. Matthews, my brush sucks. Well, it doesn't really suck. It just means it most likely someone didn't clean it well. And so if your brush is like this one where there's a lot of paint left on it because someone didn't wash it, what you're gonna do is dip it, dip it into the dirty water, the one that's closest. And look at all this paint that's coming out. Someone was using yellow. Mr. Matthews, the detective, Sherlock Holmes right here. Someone's using yellow. So I just swished it around in there. And then what I'm gonna do is place it in the center of my tissue paper. And then I'm gonna fold it over on it. So I'm making a pinching motion. I'm pinching with my first finger and my thumb. So I have a finger on either side. See either side of that. And then what I'm gonna do is pull, pull through. And look how much color came out. And so I'll just repeat that by finding another clean place pinch and pull through, pinch and pull through. 
pinch and pull through. And this is how we clean all our brushes here in the studio. Um, this helps us reshape them so that they have a nice little point. It keeps them from fraying out like this and get the scary hair. Uh, all right. And so when I have this brush, it's been clean. I should be able to put it into the clean water, stir it around, and my clean water should still be clean. It should not turn yellow like that because I did a great job cleaning it. And now I can just pinch and pull this through and reshape it for the next person who's going to use it. Now, if you got a scary hair one like this one, it's all over the place. What you can do is also dip it in the dirty water, swish it around, and then put it inside and pull through. And this person was using green. And we're just going to reshape it. And it might not get there right away. It might need a few times going through and reshaping the scary hair one. But if you do this well enough, uh, it should retain its shape and be ready to be used again. Nice point on there. It's ready to go. So we have clean brushes now. We have a clean palette now. We just need to start painting, right? Yeah, something like that. Well, we can't. We can't yet. Because if I just put my pat right here on this and I put it onto my paper, I'm getting nothing. I'm getting nothing. Nothing. So what I need to do is something called charge my paints. I'm going to charge them. Just like you charge your phone, you got to get them ready. And what they need is water uh, to break through the surface tension and absorb into there to get the pigments flowing. So with my clean brush, I'm going to dump it in the dirty water real quick and dab it off. So make sure that's clean. I'll put it in the clean water like so. And then I'm going to just take some of that clean water and I'm going to place it, you see that, on the purple and make that wet right there. I'll clean off my brush, dab it away, get some more clean water. And I'm just trying to soak it up a little bit so that I have enough water in there that it starts breaking down and making it less hard and making the pigment flow in this purple. Okay. So I'll clean off my brush. I need to charge another one. So I charge it off. My water in the dirty one is already looking dirty. That is okay. I'm going to take this water. I'm going to do this light blue right here. Clean up, get some more clean water on here. I'm trying not to drip on my paper either. So even though it looks like I'm going fast, I will try to do this in slow motion for you. I put my clean brush in the clean water and then I move it over and around my paper into the pigment. Sorry. Uh, so what I do, again, and this is just from years of practicing, is I put my brush in the clean water, then I move it out and around my work and bring it over to the pigment I want to work in. So I'm just going to charge the ones I'm actually going to work on. Um, you can see I skipped this one. I'm using purple, blue, green. So I'm charging them up. And there's just gonna be habits of going back and forth. It's developing this workflow of where you need to go. I'm gonna charge this orange here, okay? So I got orange, I got green, I got blue, and I got purple. You can choose whichever co colors you want. It is up to you. That is absolutely the case, okay? So there we go. Whew. All clean, clean out my brush, dry it off. I'm just stroking it uh, on the paper towel or the uh, tissue paper. And so uh, when you're using a brush, the best way to use a brush is imagine you're petting a cat. So you would pet a cat with the hair, right? You would go that way. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be petting the cat. You're not stabbing, you're not twisting, you're not doing anything like that. You are petting the cat. And that's gonna help keep your brush in good use so that you can use it for 50, 60 years. All right, so we got our palette, we got that. We are actually really set because we are, paints are charged, they're ready to go. Oh, we are, set up for success. Let's get this going. Um, the first box right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says wet on wet. And the way I wrote it down is the first thing is what the brush is going to do. And the second thing is what the paper is going to do. So our brush needs to be wet and our paper needs to be wet for wet on wet. And this is why 
this is why we have two things of water. I had a student once ask me, Mr. Matthews, we need two cups of water? Why would we need that? I've only ever watercolored with one. And I reply back, well, you're probably doing it wrong and you're probably making it harder for yourself. Because if I was to do this next technique with this dirty water, it would contaminate my box and I would not get the desired effect I want. But by having clean water here and only clean water, I can take my clean brush, swirl it around, get some water on there, and what I want to do here is wetten the paper. I do not want to make puddles. I just want to make my paper wet. So I'm not trying to have freestanding puddles on there. Now, if you do get some area like right here, I have a lot of water. I can pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. Like I'm petting a cat and get some more water and make this little box wet. All right, so that is wet. This is wet. You can sort of see it. It's a little bit darker than these ones because it's wet. It's starting to sort of wrinkle a little bit. Uh, this isn't actual water paper. It is mixed media paper. And so we can do drawings. We can do pen work. We can do uh, acrylics. We can do water. But it doesn't do anything just one really well. It does all of them sort of OK. And so we're going to get a little bend. But that's why we have left this piece of paper by itself. So this square is wet. It is damp to the touch. I can feel it. It is wet. Uh, what I'm going to do is go straight into my pigment right here. This one right here. And get this. I'm just going to pick our school colors. Blue. I'm doing blue. And so what I'm going to do is come over here. Uh, my brush is now wet. My paper is wet. And I'm just going to touch it. And you can see it sort of bleeds out a little bit. And it gets kind of fuzzy. Uh, this is a great technique. Uh, when you are doing watercolors uh, for like skin tones, things like that, uh, anything soft, uh, gradients, anything like that, you can get some amazing uh, blends of things with a wet on wet technique. It looks like I kind of missed a spot, Mr. Matthews, and I, that's okay. I can clean off my brush. Just add a little bit more water to this right here where I missed that spot. And then I can blend these all together on the wet paper and the wet pigment. All right. And so you get the sort of wispy look, kind of looks like sky almost. Um, it's really good for like doing things like water, uh, skies, things like that, clouds. It's a great technique for that as well. And we'll get more into it. We're just doing the basic today. So I cleaned off my brush. Uh, next one. We are going to go wet. That's what the brush is doing. It is wet. The paper is going to be dry. And so this is wet on dry. And so I just have my pigment. I'm going to use blue so you can see it. And I'm loading it up. And I'm just going to draw or paint on the dry paper. There we go. And you can see how much darker it gets. And you can see it's not spreading out. It's not going everywhere else. It is just staying where I put it. So I can get some more color. And this is how you get like that deep contrast. Uh, you can create a lot of emphasis with your artwork uh, by using this technique. Uh, this is great for doing like outlines. Let's say you're drawing a person and you want to do like, I don't know, their hair. Or you want to do, let's say, uh, their eye and you want it to be really detailed and stand out. You could definitely do this. This is also great for color blocking. So let's say you have like a house and you just want to put in one solid color. This is the, a great technique for it. And it lessens the warp of your paper as well. Now, I, my color has become uncharged. And so I need to just clean off my brush. Clean it off. So I'm just get off all that. So I'm not putting in any pigment into my clean water. And then add some more water to that blue one. And then I can finish up the square. You can see how dark and rich those colors are compared to the wet on wet technique. It's really good um, just to, to get things exactly a dark hue or a tone or tint or shade, uh, more shades uh, than tints, but that is the wet on dry. Now the damp on dry is a little bit confusing. 
Uh, usually it's dry on dry, but I don't think that's actually technically true. And so what I'm gonna do is clean off my brush again. I think it just makes more sense this way. And what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna create a puddle. And so I need clean water. I'm gonna use my palette for the first time here. And I'm just gonna make a puddle right here. So I'm taking water and putting it right here on this little area. I had some blue. I don't know if I want that blue. So I'm gonna clean that out. And if that happens to you, you can just do that. Clean off your brush. And if your thing is getting like this, you can turn it over, get another area that's sort of dry, or you can get a new one, depending on how conscious you are about supplies. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, get some clean water, put it in this palette, and I'm creating a, palette, a puddle. Now, if you're mixing colors, it's always better to mix more color and watercolor, I think, uh, than mixing too little because it's easy to clean up watercolors. You have a lot of pigment over here that you can use. Um, and then if you get a color that you really like, uh, then you can come back and use it over and over. So I have a big puddle here. It is sopping up. I am going to dab my paintbrush into that hue I was using. I'm using blue, you can use whatever color. And it's just gonna be right here, okay? And it's gonna be a lot like this wet on wet because it's gonna have that light color, but it's gonna be paint a lot like the dry. So I can get that light hue right here by just having my paint sort of watered down a little bit. And it'll give us a damp on dry effect. And this will give us like lighter sort of washes that we can do, um, just ways of working and it'll give us a little bit more control just like that wet on dry. All right, so we have the wet on wet, the wet on dry, the damp on dry. We have a clean paintbrush now. We have our white. Look at how clean our water is. Look how dirty our water is. But having it separated totally works out. If we were just to use this, it would muddy all of our colors and it'd become brown really quick and we'd be very frustrated and upset and we'd be like, oh, I don't like watercolor, so I don't want to use them again. We don't want that. We want you to have a good time with watercolors. So I need my pencil for the next one. I'm going to do a gradient and a gradient. And I'm going to have it go left to right. So I'm just going to put left and draw an arrow to right. So I know that the gradient's going this way. And then I'm going to say I'm using blue. I start with blue on the left side and I'm going to go to orange. Okay, orange. There we go. So what we need to do with a gradient, which one do you think is the best for a gradient? When did I say that word? Do you remember? Do you remember when I said that word? Gradient, which one did I use that for? Well, if you are saying wet on wet, you are correct. Sorry, my coffee cup broke today. So I'm using a super can. Um, so gradient, we need to do wet on wet. So I'm gonna get clean brush into clean water. And then I am going to cover this whole little rectangle in water. Um, remember, we do not want pedal, puddles, but we want it wet enough so that the paint flows. So it can't just be damp. It's got to be at the next level up between soaking and damp. So let's get that in and make sure you get everything so you don't have to go back. There we go. And you can hopefully see that there's a little bit of difference between these two. Uh, the one on the right is still dry and my brush is clean. And so I'm gonna start with the blue and I'm gonna put blue right here on the left side. I'm just taking a swash of that color right here. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush, put it inside the water, pull it out, clean it off, dry it off. And then I'm gonna go straight into the orange that I charged earlier. And I'm going to put the orange on this side. You can see how bright and bold those colors are. Nice, right? Clean off my brush yet again. Dry it off so I'm not getting anything into the clean water because that's where we're going next to the clean water. Okay, making sure it's all out. So I'm going to the clean water. Look at, no, nothing's changing. It's awesome. Then I'm going to take my clean water. I'm gonna start on the blue and pull it to be about halfway. So I'm just gonna pull over the blue, like I'm petting the cat. I'll clean off my brush, go into the clean water yet again and go to my 
ooh, orange and pull it over. So meat's about halfway. And you should get a little bit of a gradient where they meet. Now, if yours is like mine, where they just sort of meet up, what you can do is clean off your brush again and then put some clean water in there. And then just in this little area, start blending them together by going back and forth. And you should get sort of like a greenish color if you're using my two colors. Uh, this is a really good thing to show speed. So if I wanted to show the flash running, I might do this to create this like blurred look that like this guy is going so fast uh, across the page. Uh, you can use it for tons of different things. Like let's say the sun is setting over here and you want the to give the illusion over a lake that it is setting uh, or through the sky and the light and the beam is coming off of it. You could use that. Uh, for this one, the next gradient, and if I'm going fast, you can pause this video at any time and then press play when you're ready. So if you go in for this one, I'm going to say it's up and down and I'm going to start with orange, a lot of orange. And then I'm going to use blue. So if I start the opposite way and I'm going from the top down, I have a clean brush. Let me check. Clean brush. Yep. Going into the water because I know I need to charge my orange a little bit more. So I have orange and I'm just going to put a horizontal stroke with my brush stroke. That's right, left to right across the top there. And I'll clean off my brush. If you want to add more, you can clean off my brush. And I know my blue is charged up, so I can go straight into it with a clean brush and put blue down at the bottom. Right? Blue there. I'll clean off my brush. And now you know where we're going, right? You should know by now. We're creating this gradient. We were supposed to make the paper wet, right? <gasps> Well, if that's the case and you run into this problem and you're like, I did not wet the paper, that's totally okay. What we can do is take this clean water and create the gradient by filling it in with that water right now. Oops. I need to clean my brush as I'm going before I put it into the wet water. So this is good for like oceans. You can use this side to side technique, uh, but just by bringing it down, you can get something that looks pretty cool and interesting. Um, and you can see the difference between the gradients of a dry, <gasps> okay, lights went off, let me go, there we go. Get that back on. Uh, you can see the difference there. So you can create a pretty cool striking image um, with the gradients. It's just easier with the wet on wet technique than the dry or wet on dry technique, okay? So depending on how you use it or how you want to use it, you can use them and it's up to you to choose how you use these, okay? Uh, the next thing, uh, you all know how to use your initials, right? It's your first name, first letter of your first name and your last net letter of your last, no, wait, yes first letter of your first name, it's been a long day students, and your first letter of your last name. There we go. So what you're gonna do with a clean brush, that's right, clean brush into clean water. What you're gonna do is write your initials in this square right here. Right here, we're gonna write our initials, okay? And so mine is T for Troy. And so I, with the clean water, I'm gonna make a puddle that looks like a T. So I want the water to stand up on the paper. So I might have to use more water than I have been using because I want it to stand up and you should see sort of like a bubble effect. So there's the top of the T and here is the T part that comes down. And then I need to put my M in and I don't know if you can see that too well on the video, but it should be right there. And the water is standing, standing on the paper. It's bubbling up on there but it's not going anywhere. It's not dripping because we're on a flat surface and I'm not using a ton of water, but just enough to create that bubble. So clean off my brush, even though I was using clean water. Now I gotta think of what color I want. I haven't used purple yet, but purple is a great color. So I might need to charge it up a little bit. So I'll get some clean water, put it into the purple and load up my brush. 
And then I'm going to go over here and just poke. I'm just going to poke the, where the T meets uh, the top and the center. And you can sort of see it starts taking off. I'm going to poke another part of it. It just starts taking off and going where the water is. And I can keep poking it and get sort of like a tie dye effect almost. And this is just to show you that watercolor, if there's water on your paper, it will flow wherever wherever the water is, but only the water is. So you can control it. Remember, this is all about controlling water. So if you are a person that loves control, you might really get into this, or you might also get really frustrated uh, because water sometimes has a mind of its own. And I was just poking, just poking where I put the water. And so you can get a cool effect like that. If you do this, know that it's gonna take longer longer for your artwork to dry because it has to soak in, okay? And it might get a little fuzzy if you do that too. All right, students, with a clean brush, uh, let's move on. Again, if I'm going too fast, you can pause this video anytime. It's just after school and I wanna go home and eat. So, uh, here on this one, there it says it's all gonna be about blacks, okay? So I'm just gonna title it Black, and this is how we're going to use it, okay? Uh, I need a color, but I need these three areas clean. So what I'm going to do, this one has been used quite a bit, and it's damp, and so I can wipe it away. And I am good to go. So uh, with a clean brush, I need to charge my black. So I'm going to go into clean water and go find my black color or pigment or value, because black is not really a color, it's a value. But we're gonna go get more clean water and put it into the black. And look what it does to your water. It like turns it black. Just a little bit of black is goes a long way. Now, if you've been with me for one year, two years, or three years in this program, you know that anytime we paint, I always say just use a tiny, 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 tiny drop of black because it will take over your painting and your paint immediately. And you don't want that. You want to be able to control it. So just by adding a little bit at a time, uh, even though it goes slower and it's not exactly the way you want to do it, just get right into it. Uh, you'll be happier with the results. And so that is what we're going to be working on. Um, we're going to need three puddles, one here, one here, and one here. So with a clean brush, I am making some puddles. Okay. And if you have a bigger brush, it might go a little bit quicker but I am just making some puddles here, okay? And I am gonna use green for this. You do not have to. Uh, just green really works well to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And so that's about three equal puddles here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of green, load it up and put it in this one and you get this lovely light color green, right? And I'm gonna take about the same amount of green and put it right here. There we go, okay? Now I'm going to clean off my brush and with this last puddle, what I'm going to do is take some black and stick it in the black and put it down here and you can sort of see it makes it really black in that puddle. Okay. And so what I want to do is with a clean brush, clean off all that, I'm going to go into this one right here. Okay. Loading up my paintbrush with this green right here. And I am going to put a mark right on my paper. So I get this lovely sort of like grass green right here, okay? Nice little green. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush. And now this is the part. This is the part that might get you, okay? So I'm gonna take one little bit of black and put it into this green, okay? And watch as I stir it up, that color that we get. It's sort of like uh, a dark green, grayish green, okay? And this is called a shade. Anytime you add black to a color, you get a shade. Think of like going outside and putting black lenses over your eyes. They're called sunglasses, right? Or the cool terminology, shades, you get a shade of that color. So anytime you put on sunglasses, what you're seeing is shades if you're adding black or something darker. So we have a shade here of green. So I'm gonna clean off my brush yet again. I'm going to take this shade and I'm going to put one into this one, one little brush amount of that shade into here. 
And then I will put this down next to that color that I just put down. And you'll see it slightly changes, slightly changes. So I'm gonna go into this shade again and put more into here to get a darker color. So I will paint that again at the kitty. And now I will go into here, get more of that shade, put it in here. Okay. And you can see it's getting darker already. So I'm going to put this down here. And you're seeing a light value scale or change uh, as it goes from light green to darker green. And then we get more of this shade and put it in here and it's getting darker and darker. And we are about where we wanna be with this. We're about halfway through here. So we're just fill this in, halfway in here. More for the next one. And there we go, there's about half. Sneak another one in there. And you can slightly see it's changing, slightly getting darker. Now, here comes the part. We're going to take one brush stroke or one bit of brush. So I'm just tapping it in the black. I'm going to tap it into this color. And you see that it gets darker. So that's our next step. I'm going to change it over here to get darker. There we go. You can see it's shifting, shifting. And then we'll take another black, put it in here. down you get like this dark gray green look to it right now we're going to take another bit of black put it in here and it's going to become more black now i'm just using a little bit it's coming grayish almost there we go put this area in here and then we're going to take more black put it in here and so we're just transitioning this color all the way to the black we have, okay? There we go. Take more black for this next step. There we go. More black to that next step. A little bit more black to that next step. I'm just going to straight black for that last step. And you can see this sort of gradual gradient shift of the greens to this grayish black to black. So you can use that uh, as a way to work. Now, this is the important part. Anytime you use color uh, watercolors, it is always easiest. That's right. If you want a trick to not work harder, uh, to go lightest to darkest. Uh, so if you're painting things, you might want to start with the yellow. If you're using yellow, orange, and red, you might want to start with that yellow, go to orange, then go to red. Uh, if you are using like blue, light, or green, and purple, it depends on which one is the lightest or if there's a, a tint in there, adding white to it. Um, but you want to use the lightest color first and then go to the darkest color and build up because you can't really go backwards with watercolors. You can keep areas blank, and that's totally fine. Uh, but then if you drops on it or something like that, or things get in the way, it can become a headache and you might have to start over. But you're an artist, so you can, you can always start over. Um, so we have all these different ways of working with it. We need to know how to use different brush strokes. Uh, and again, we're just using one brush right here, right? So let's get into it. I'm gonna move mine up so you can see it. I'm gonna write a little bit. I'll move my cup of water. I'm gonna be very careful. I do not recommend you doing that. But I just want you to see how clean our water is still compared to our, even after using black. So I have my brush, it is clean now. I need some brush strokes. First one we're gonna do is the flick. And I spell flick F-L-I-C-K, flick. And if we imagine what a flick is, we can think about flicking boogers. We can think about flicking flies. We can think of flicking, flicking. It's like a fast motion. And so what we're gonna do is if our, my hand is the paper and we're looking at it sideways. So my hand is the paper and the paintbrush is here. We're gonna flick it, flick it, 
flick it, and it's more of a wrist action, okay? So if you're a hockey stop shot, uh, if you're a hockey player, you might do a wrist shot, and it's flicking the wrists, and we're going to do the same. We're going to flick the wrist. If you're shooting three throws, you might flick your wrist at the end, uh, however you want to do it. So we're going to flick, flick our wrist. I'm going to take some clean water. Let's go with green, just because I think it's a good one for the flick, because you'll see what I'm talking about. And as we go, if the paper's down here, right, and I'm flicking up, flicking up, depending on how hard I push down or how close this tip is to the paper, you're going to get different line qualities, okay? And you'll see that right now. So if I push the paper, if I lightly touch the paper and flick up, this is what happens. I get these very thin lines. You see that? Just the tiniest, tiniest part of the brush is touching it right at the very, very end. And I am flicking. And so this is like giving me a lot of control. My paper brush is barely touching. So this is how you get some really fine lines. Like it's starting to look like grass, right? Uh, you can also do a, a, a thick flick. And so I might push down more. Push down more. And you can play around with it and get different variations of these flicks. There's there. It's just all in the wrist. Flicking, flicking, flicking. All right. Clean off my brush. So that is the flick. Uh, the next one, we're going to write down thick, T H. I C K, and then we're going to go too thin, too thin, T H I N, and then we're let's go back to thick, T H I C K. All right, so we're going to go thick to thin to thick again, and so this time let me charge another color, clean off my brush, get some clean water. I'm going to go to this fuchsia, pinkish color in there. There we go. Charge that up. It's at the bottom of mine, but you'll see it here. So if I'm going thick to thin, it's all about how, how close and how much pressure I'm putting um, on my brush. So for thick, I might press down all the way and paint. And then when I get to thin, I might pull it up further away from the paper and then push down again to get to thick. And so you can see that your line changes depending on how close you have your brush to the page. So let's try that again. So I'm, this time I'm going to go thin, thick, thin. So thin it is, and this is where it helps to stand, sit up, sit up. You have a little bit more control than if you were like laying down. So if I go thin, my brush is barely touching the paper. And then when it's thick, I'm pressing down with the whole side of the brush. And then I'm going back to thin. So you can see it going back to thin. Let's do another one. Let's go thick again. Thick. Thin. Thick. I think it's spotty. It's all right. So that, this is really good for uh, showing bricks. Like if you want to use bricks, because bricks aren't perfectly straight. And so if you were making a brick wall, this might help that illusion of keeping things uneven. Uh, in those lines. All right, the next one, I'm gonna clean my brush off. Uh, the next one, I'm gonna use, what color have I? I need a color that shows up. Uh, maybe I'll use orange again, okay? So this one is the dab. Pacha, pacha, pacha. No, oh, it's not 2018. I shouldn't be doing that anymore. I'm too old to do that. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So the dab. The dab is not doing this every time. What you want to do is take some color. I have a clean brush, so I'm going to charge my orange again because I think it might have dried up a little bit. And what we're going to do is dab. Dabbing is just sort of a tapping, tapping of the paper. And so you'll see me do this. And depending on how hard you push it or how lightly you touch it, um, the tapping, you get a different effect. So tap, 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 tap. I'm barely touching the paper. I'm getting these little orange dots. Now, if I touch more of the paper, tap, 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 I get more. And this is a dab. We're just dabbing the paper, just dabbing away. And I can turn it, I can twist it as I'm dabbing. Just 
dabbing away. This is really good for like if you're creating a splash in a scene, let's say you're doing a graphic novel and you have some watercolors in there and you wanna show that like, oh, it's raining, you could use a dab, uh, splash of water. Uh, it's really good for fur and animal prints, things like that, all right? So that's the dab. And the last one that we're covering today, and these are just, again, very basic. Uh, you can get books on watercolors. You can look on YouTube on different brush strokes you can use. This one's gonna be wavy, wavy. And it's sort of a combination of uh, thick and thin. And I'm gonna use a dark blue. So let me clean off my brush, get some clean water and charge up my dark blue here. There we go. Dark blue is all charged up, ready to go. And the wavy one is we're just gonna make a wavy motion with our arm and our brush, but then we're gonna control during that wavy motion, how close or far away our brush is, okay? So if it is barely touching the paper, you might get a thin line like that. If your brush is fully touching the paper, you might get a thin line like, or a thicker line like that. If you want to, you can just play around with it. Go thick to thin. So you can create all these different types of lines. And we'll go over more things later. But this is just what I would like you to know on the starting of it. So we got some wavy, we got flick, we got thin, dab. Now, we're here, this needs to dry. So we're just gonna set it off to the side. There we go, not too much off the side. And what we gotta do is clean off our brush. And so what I'm gonna do is put my brush inside my tissue paper and pull and twist and pull and twist. And I'm pinching again with my fingers and getting all that color out and trying to reshape it, reshape it, okay? Now, I wouldn't do this with paintbrushes that you are sharing in the classroom, but if you have your own personal ones, you can take a little bit of saliva and put it on here and twist it together. And yeah, a little saliva, a little spit, spittle from your mouth and put it on there and help twist it together. And that will help keep your, uh, the shape of your brush a little bit longer and maintain it just because there's some enzymes in your mouth that really do well with the brush hair. Now, I uh, would not do that with brushes that you share. I would never do that with brushes at school. So please don't do it with hair. But since you're all using your own personal brushes, that might be something that you'd want to do and you can choose to do it. Uh, my, I can put, my, my tissue paper is all damp. Oh, well, that's perfect because I can clean it off. Clean off my palette and look how easy this is. And when I'm done with this, it is gonna be ready for the next person to use. It's gonna be ready for me to use. It is just good habit to get into, to clean this up after you're done using it. It is ready, the palette side to go. What I'm gonna do is take another tissue paper and what I'm going to do is dab, dab down on the colors I used. You can see they're all shiny. So I'm gonna dab this purple and lift up and I might dab it again. And then what I'm gonna do is on this thing, I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to dab the blue in this new clean area. And that, that blue is clean there. And I'll fold that over, go to the green, dab that. There we go, clean this off. I'll go to the orange, dab that. And yeah, we're taking off a lot of color, but if you're, these are your own personal ones, you may not want to just let them open and be air dried. Um, you might want to like seal them up. And this is just a fast way to get some of that extra moisture out um, just so that they're not splashing around. There you go. And you can see out of all of those, okay, I cleaned what, six, seven different colors is using one tissue paper. And I could clean a lot more because I have a lot more clean areas there. So now I can put my paintbrush in the center there. I can close it and I am ready to go um, by having that away. Now here, what we need to do is check to make sure everything's dry. And so what we're looking for is any shiny spots, any shiny spots in our work. If it is shiny, then we just let it sit and keep drying. 
if you are in a hurry and you're like, I gotta get out the door, my project's due in 10 minutes. What you can do is take the tissue paper, put it on top and press down like a stamp, straight up and down. And then you wanna peel it off nice and light and you might get some without ruining everything else. If you scrub, you're gonna spread things around. But by dampening it, uh, dabbing it up and down, you should be able to get take off some of that. Now, this is the cool part, what I like to see. If we look over here, here's page 19. Look at page 18. Page 18 is all wrinkly because this isn't 100% best watercolor paper. It is good enough watercolor paper. And so it is kind of wrinkly. But look at page 19, perfectly smooth. Look at page 20, perfectly smooth. Look at our leaf drawing page perfectly smooth like we can use this for a painting next we can use it for a um a life drawing next we can use it to shade with whatever we want all these pages are absolutely ready to go because we isolated this one page and did our watercoloring like this where we had it by itself and so remember that anytime we use watercolors what you want to do is go uh, isolate it so that it can still be in our sketchbook we're not tearing it out it's still there but it's not affecting any of these other pages there okay now um, we know this is dry we stamped it it's not spreading anything around what we can do is close our sketchbook my hands could work please hands thank you and then what I'm going to do is turn my sketchbook over and place it face down on a table. And the weight of all those extra pages will help flatten it out. Now, if you are like, I really want this to be flat, you can stack other books on top of it. You can put any other things that are heavy to help compress it and it'll help start flattening it out. It'll still be slightly wrinkly because this isn't a 140 pound paper, it's 98 point pound paper. Um, and is really good for drawing and doing mixed media things but it's not the best watercolor paper. And so by having that weight on here and having it squeezed, you will have something that I think you will be really proud of. Uh, and then we'll just set that aside. And now we have these two things left, our water. Do you see how clean that is? Do you see how clean that is? That is amazing. Look how dark this is. All right, um, do not drink these absolutely do not drink either of these. If you are in the studio and you are working, have a water bottle that you know is something you drink of. Do not drink out of your glasses of water. Do not do it. Just like most things I say, if you drink this, you have a good chance of getting diarrhea. Okay? So don't do it. Don't do it at all. Don't put yourself in that situation. Um, what you would want to do, though, is take this water and dump it down the sink. Uh, it's not really great for anything. Um, I mean, it's not going to kill anything and it's perfectly fine to go down the street sink. Uh, this water though is really actually still clean. And if you have a house plant, I would recommend you putting it in the house plant. Um, not waste the water, give that little plant a little drink of your artistic practice for the day. And let's not waste, uh, as many resources as we can. So, uh, go take care of those where they need to be. Um, then once you're done with it, uh, what I would like you to do is use your smartphone, use your camera and take a picture get through our notes back to page 18, take a picture of your work and you can use, no, let me get my password. Uh, you can use, where is my app for Google classroom, Google classroom, click on your class, click on the assignment. And then you can take a picture with your smartphone, any smartphone, as long as you have the Google Classroom app downloaded and you are signing in with your school ID, or you can go to our Google Classroom, click on the help tab and watch the two videos on how to upload videos from your Chromebook or school computer. So upload an image of your work showing that you were able to create this and get this done. Hopefully you learned something new. I cannot wait to see what you create with this. It's going to be really exciting. And uh, just so you know, uh, there's two of me. And I really enjoy having you in class. So I hope you have a great day and um, make the world a better place. I know you can. All right. See y'all.
buttons. Bye.